What's going on, guys? Let's talk about facts, not feelings, not opinions. It is a historical fact that the Great Depression happened. Fact. Cannot argue, cannot debate it. It is a fact that the U.S. stock market and the U.S. economy was down for 10 years in a row. This is a historical fact. Another fact, at some point, history happens on cycles. So even though Graham Stephan, Andrew Jack, Meet Kevin, Richard Fain, everyone is encouraging you to buy on the dip. And I feel, and hopefully I can make my points as I explain this, that I feel that is the absolute worst advice and you will be guaranteed to lose money. We're about to go on another fact. The stock market has been down seven weeks in a row. Now, why is that important? That is the longest period that the stock market has been down in 90 years, except before the Great Depression. Fact. So I saw someone put up there, it's like your favorite stock tubers telling you to buy on the dip. You bought on the dip and it dipped again. Some other facts. Bitcoin is supposed to defy gravity. And di Bitcoin is not supposed to be correlated with the stock market. But stock market crashed, Bitcoin crashed. Guess what's going to happen if the stock market continues to go down? Bitcoin is going to go down. These are facts. This is not theory. This is not hyperball. This is not some stuff that I'm talking to you. I'm just saying to you. So with the fact that this is the longest period that the stock market has been down in 90 years should give you pause before you start dollar cost averaging your money into the stock market. I feel that this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about some other things. Let's go back to 2018. On this channel, I was telling you that the U.S. economy was not as strong as it would appear. And one of the reasons the U.S. economy isn't as strong as it would appear, and you go ahead and fact check me on this, look at the number of DoorDash YouTube creators who are doing extremely well. This tells me that a lot of people are watching DoorDash content. There's the DoorDash Diaries, there's Nugs, there's Moore's Finance, and there's also a lot of gig uh, apps. There's uh, Gen On The Go, Let's Go. There's a number of YouTubers, really small YouTube channels, but their videos get anywhere from seven to 40,000 views every time they upload because the audience of DoorDash delivery drivers looking to make more money is quite huge. Now, there are some people in certain DoorDash markets that make more money, because typically if you're in a good market, you can make 1,200 a week gross before you count gas. And that's $4,800 a month, which is higher than the average $35,000 a year that the average person, 81% of America makes. So with and I, this is why there are so many people who are doing DoorDash. And if you get yourself a good multi-app sequence going on, where you're doing DoorDash, you're doing Shipped, and you're doing Roadies, uh, there are people who are literally making $400, $500 consistently per day, per day, riding around in their cars. So 
a lot of people are starting to get wise to real ways to make money. But one of the reasons that the United States economy wasn't as strong as people thought it was in 2018 and then 2019, and we all know what happened in 2020, was the manufacturing of low wage jobs. Henry Ford at the turn of the century figured out that if he paid his factory workers enough money where they could afford the product that they were building, that he would do better and he was 100% correct. Right now, we have an American economy that is producing a ton of garbage, low wage jobs, which means that you could work 40 hours a week and not be able to pay your rent. I want you to think about that. You get up every day, brush your teeth, comb your hair, go to work, put in a good solid eight to 10 hours a day, and at the end of the month, you cannot afford to pay your rent. That's the problem. And we have a ton of jobs working in grocery stores, working at Target, working at Walmart, working for Amazon. Unless you live in like 30, 40, or 50 minutes outside of a major metropolitan area, you cannot afford to live anywhere close to the city. So with that, we also have inflation. Because, I'm I, I, all right, let me just kind of jump to the gist. Um, I'm going on record as the only one on YouTube telling you not to buy on the dip. Like I said, I feel, I strongly believe that this is the beginning of that second 10 year window of a lowered downturn stock market, which if you, once again, and just to be clear, to provide 100% clarity, if you know how to play the stock market, because a lot of big money is going short against the market. So if you know how to do options and puts and calls and play, you can make money in this market. You can make millions if this market, if you have that knowledge, if you know how to play that game. So I say that because there are hedge funds, there are billionaires that are gonna make a lot of money in this down market. Doesn't matter if the market's up or down, it just matters what levers you wanna pull to make money. And I am seeing that a lot of big money is going short against a lot of things. A lot of big money, a lot of big money. So you could go ahead and listen to Graham Stephan or meet Kevin and keep buying on the dip and I just have a feeling, just a strong feeling that you're gonna regret that because I have a feeling six months from now, I'm gonna make another video talking about how this has been the longest time that the stock market has been down in 90 years. It's been down for six months. And at this point, this is going to start shaking a lot of people's confidence because right now, um, you have people who are, they're a little jittery. They're a little bit on edge because it's been seven weeks. And normally uh, what the downturns, the downturns have been literally 30 days, maybe 40 days and market bounces back up, right? It hasn't done that. And I'm gonna give you one reason that I feel that the market hasn't and also, like all of you people out here who are trying to dissect my language, when I use the term, I feel, which that makes me like a woman, uh, you just a complete idiot. I will use the word choices I wanna use. And me saying, I feel, doesn't make me a woman. I am more masculine than you, because I'm about to say something to all you folks who are trying to intersect my language. Can you survive one month without working? I can, can you? So let's stop talking about silly, stupid things 
And when I start, we're focusing on important things like financial stability. Can you do that? Because see, all this little ticky tacky stuff is the purvey of the low expectation having men, of the non-accomplished having men, of the weak men who don't have shit going on. So I'll just put that out there. So I feel, once again, that this is the beginning of that second long-term downward market. It may not go 10 years, but if I had to pull a number out the air, I would say three to five years. Now, what this is going to do is kill all of these YouTube channels that are predicating on their fire number. See, once again, I, you know, I'll be really 100% transparent. I don't participate in the stock market. Um, I feel that the best way to build wealth is to become a producer. And it's the fastest way to produce wealth. You could play the stock market game. In 30 years, you can have a million. Or you can start a business in three to five years, have a million that keeps replenishing itself and giving you money. Because right now, there are a lot of people out there who are trying to get rich in the stock market because, you know, starting a business is just too hard. L let me say something. Life is hard. Having a relationship is hard. Being an adult is hard. And I will say to you, that if you step up and stop being a weak little bitch, a scared of work, a scared of sacrifice, afraid of delayed gratification, that if you join me in starting a business, your life will be not a little better five years in the future. It will be 180 degrees different than what it is today. Because that's going to be the path, like right, once, once again. Everyone wants to like, when I talk about multiple in streams of income, everybody wants to like, I got five multiple streams of income. Okay, let's go ahead and clarify. How many streams of income do you have that can pay all your bills? Like, if I wanted to cheat and create a YouTube video, it's like, well, I have 12 multiple, like, I have, like, let's go through it. I have um, Disruptive Mail, a monetized YouTube channel, which makes money, that's a stream of income. I have The Corporate Game, which is a monetized channel, that, that's a stream of income. I have this channel, which is a stream of income. I have the Glendon Camera School, which is a stream of income. I have my online courses. I have my consulting business. I have my affiliate. So if I were to try to cheat and include the chunk change, that really like uh, my disruptive mail channel, it might do $500 a month in AdSense on a good month. So that ain't enough to pay nothing. But if I wanted to, cause if I wanted to be factual and say, I have seven streams of income. From a factual standpoint, I do. But since I keep it funky and real with you, I only count the streams of income that can literally pay all my bills. I leave out the chunk change because in the grand scheme of thing, I don't want you thinking that, all right, you can go out here and build, let's say you go out here and build uh, 10 YouTube channels and they make 150 bucks a month and you have 10 different streams of income, but collectively they still can't pay all your bills. What good is that? You know, once again, I put up a video, you know, I put a link down below where you should go check it out. The uh, business of content creation, which only benefits the content creator. It doesn't benefit you. It only benefits the content creator. But what I feel is happening is the economy is deleveraging from all of the financial fuckery that we've been participating since we and also, I had someone put a comment. Talk, I've been talking about how America has killed the middle class by getting rid of manufacturing. I said it was corporate MBAs, 
greedy people and it's like well it's just like you just said that manufacturing just disappeared no i've talked about that see once again if you're going to critique me you need to watch all my fucking videos because you sound like a fucking fool when you come up here with your little weak ass arguments based on incomplete analysis of the content I put out. Unless you watch all my videos, you really can't speak a fucking thing with your stupid ass. And you know who I'm talking to. Because I have talked about uh, the manufacturing, the manufacturing leaving America has literally killed the middle class because that was a pathway for someone who didn't go to college, didn't even graduate high school, and they could go ahead and get a job that would enable them to buy a house, get married, produce children, send those kids to college, and have a retirement. Because the way the system used to be was you got a manufacturing job and you didn't have to put any of your money away in a 401k, or stock market or nothing or RA because the company had a, a, a unwritten contract with you that if you work for us and you give us 20, 30 years, we're gonna give you a pension. And one of the things about many of these old school pensions was they paid the person just as much money in their pension years as they were making working. So the abdication of manufacturing, getting rid of a pension so what has happened is the american public in recent years in the 1980s 70s 80s 90s and now have been burdened with the responsibility that your grandfather didn't even have to worry about i was a kid i knew of a man that retired from the coal mine and because he got a pension from the coal mine he got his social security check this man was making $8,000 a month in Birmingham, Alabama. That's how the system that created a prosperous America, because here's the thing, and this is why the production of all of these low wage chump change jobs is dangerous. It sets up America where many people cannot participate in the American lifestyle. You can't afford rent, you can't buy medicine, you can't get married, you can't live on your own. So what this does is actually strangles the economy because people are not making enough money to participate in the economy full force. So this is why in 2018, 2019, you know, I was making these videos saying the American company, uh, American economy wasn't that strong. And this is the reason when 2020 hit and we had COVID, this is why things got very bad, very quickly. Very bad, very quickly. Cause I'm about to, you know, share some with you. Uh, when you build something durable and you build it on fundamental economic principles, like this is my life. One of the abiding principles that I have is I avoid debt for the most part. And that one principle has allowed me to weather many storms easily because my money isn't going to service or pay down debt. So, you know, if I didn't live in this expensive ass apartment, I could literally drive a Porsche, a BMW, and let's say I wanted to just live in a regular apartment. I could pay all my bills off 2,500 bucks a month. 2,500, because I don't have a lot of bills. I don't have a lot of obligations. And this is something, you know, because when I went ahead and gave you guys the stats on bad debts and I had someone want to argue that, you know, even if they weren't making money, they were paying all of the mortgage, so that was good debt. No, if the debt, the money that you borrow for the asset and the asset doesn't put money in your fucking pocket, it is bad debt, you dumbass. Let that shit go, because this is what got us where we are, is everyone's playing these financial games of musical chairs 
and one day the music's going to stop playing and there's not going to be any chairs for you. For me, I'll be okay. I'll be okay because I don't have no debt. I, 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 I got a chair. I got a chair. I'll be sitting pretty because one of the, you know, and also another thing that has helped me is I've always have seed money. You will see a multitude of YouTubers tell you, don't put money in the bank, don't save, have your emergency fund, and then put all your money in investments. I feel that that advice is going to be very bad going forward. Now, seed money, or what I like to call is attitude money at any time, like the car rental business, I invested 400,000. If I wanted to invest another 400,000 in the car rental business, I could. I didn't do it because, you know, I needed to get data, but essentially I'm in a position right now to start another business because I have cash. And also I have credit. I've got half a million dollars in personal credit that I'm not using. And I've got cash and then I've got maybe 200,000 in business credit that I'm not using. And let me tell you why I'm not using it. I haven't found a reliable place to distribute those funds. I, before I let any of that money in my credit goes, it's gotta be something that I can invest. Like I gotta, let's say, let's take one of my business credit cards. Let's take the, the one with the biggest limit and that's 150,000, that would be the Divi. If I can deploy $150,000 a month and in a 30 day window, I can get 250, I would do that in a heartbeat. But I haven't been able to find anything that gives those kind of returns. Like right now, I'm running an experiment and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you. I have noticed that people have been selling iPhones on eBay for much higher than you can go to Apple and buy the phone. So I've been running some experiments and I've actually sold three phones, not a lot, for $350 more than what I paid for it. And what I'm beginning to figure out, there are people around the world because they all were international. And one of the things, I, like I'll tell you, I got bit, I had a guy from the Virgin Islands order a phone and it was $150 to ship it with tracking to the Virgin Islands. So I took an L on that one. But the other three, uh, they were in different countries and they emailed me and I say, look, I will sell you this phone, but you gotta use this shipping service that includes tracking. And that's gonna be DHL or FedEx. And they were like, okay. So they paid, one guy paid like 250 and he paid $350 it's more for the phone because when I'm finding out there's a lot of places in the world where they cannot go to Apple and buy the phone direct. So the only place they can get it is eBay and some of these people will be a premium. So I've been working on this for months, but if I can really develop that into a reliable and consistent business model where I can sell a hundred phones at 350 premium, it's 35 G's a month. See where I'm going? See, this, this is why I make these videos talking about all these charlatans, fakes, and frauds who are telling that you could start a business and make all this money in 90 days and quit your job. I've been doing this for six months and I'm still developing data. So I'm in a position to take advantage of the wealth transfer once I figure out where to deploy these funds but until I know for a fact that I can deploy these funds, and this is one of the reasons I am not messing with the stock market. I feel the stock market is going to be depressed. It's going to be down for a long, long time. And uh, you know, at some point it will come back and these stocks will come back and they will stop getting hammered. But when you hear a company like Netflix, when, you know, and Tesla, Tesla's an interesting case because Tesla, has yet to make a profit. And this is one of the big reasons. Someone put out a stat that 67% of the tech companies listed in the stock exchange are not turning a profit. 
That is dangerous. Because see, this is one of the financial games that people play. And then we'll go ahead and give you the playbook. What you're gonna do is create a company and you're gonna grow the company as big as possible. You're gonna get the largest user base as possible. You're gonna get a bunch of investors and then what you're gonna do is sell this turkey of a company to another company and have an exit. This is the game that pe they're, they're not trying to build a company that creates a profit. That, that's immaterial. Mm -mm, we ain't trying to do that. We're trying to build something that we can build and sell to someone and have an exit. And this right here, and this, this financial game, because when Henry Ford built the Ford plant, he built the plant to make a profit. And this is something that along with offshoring of the manufacturing jobs, and now we're creating businesses not to serve people and create profit. We're creating business as a financial scheme. We're getting to a point where the chickens are going to come home and they're going to start roosting and the rooster is going to start going cock a doodle doo because the financial schemes have started to run their course. The financial schemes are starting to um, run into some problems. The financial schemes are starting to fall apart. The financial schemes are starting to deleverage. The financial schemes are starting to run their course. And this is why I feel that the United States stock market is going to be depressed for many years. And as it goes down, Bitcoin will go down. And once again, let me be 100% transparent and clear. If you know how to play the stock market game, you can make money in a down market if you know how to play that game. I don't know how to play that game. I'm not even going to speak on that because I, I know that P, I have a friend who recently, let me put his business out here. Uh, we were talking, we went to lunch the other day and he is a options trader. He's been trading options 20 years. And this year he took a lot of short positions against a lot of companies. And this dude made a million dollars in one month. He, most money he's ever made in the stock market in the shortest period of time. He's like, man, it is nuts. Cause he's like, literally, he says, I cannot do wrong. It's like everything that I run a short on. And once again, he's been doing it 20 years. He's got his technical analysis and he's got his system. He's got his 20 year system. He knows what he's looking for. He knows what stocks he can apply his short strategies to. And he is literally printing money right now while you, Mr. Buy and Hold Investor, your, the, the portfolio is going down three, four, 500,000. This dude is making more money than he's ever made in his life. So once again, I know from experience, and if I ever get into the stock market, I'm gonna have him school me. I'm not gonna buy an internet course or and then I'm gonna have someone that I personally know who's making real money. Because, uh, and once again, we share some sentiments. He lives in a house that is paid off. When his kids went to college, he paid cash. And he's sitting on a lot of cash. He's sitting on a ton of cash. I think he's sitting on close to 10 mil. In a paid off house, driving a Ferrari, his wife drives a Range Rover, and they take 12, 15 trips a year. That's how he living. So that's what I would do if I wanted, you know, cause I'm really thinking about it cause there's a lot of ideas going on. But once again, as I presented to you in the beginning of the video, I brought you some facts. And I feel that we're in that second, cause it's almost been a hundred years. And if you would look at history, everything comes around and certain, you know, certain things come around every 30 years, certain things come around every 60 years, certain things come around every hundred years. And we do put it bluntly. I mean, we had 90 years where the stock market was just going up, 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 up. Now we're due for a correction. And if you look at the economic landscape, that the stock market is predicated on and the way that these businesses are being run.
Because if you would look at how companies were started in the 20s and 30s and 40s, and you look at how companies are started now, especially these tech companies, they're not designed or built to make a profit. That's going to catch up with America, just like getting rid of manufacturing. Getting rid of manufacturing has caught up with America because right now we're producing all of these low wage chunk change jobs that doesn't afford anyone to have even something as moderate as a decent standard of living. I recently had to help some people out I know because they worked, I know one person worked 180 hours and they didn't have enough money to pay their rent because they was like, they were at work but because of the job they have, they weren't making the money that they normally make because it's been slow. Walmart slow, Amazon slow, Target slow, Costco slow. Everybody's slow at the same time because that STEMI money has been pulled out of the economy. And all of you people, let, let's have this conversation. When you include the 1.8 trillion in direct payments and enhanced unemployment benefits and you include the 500 billion that's 2.3 trillion that the american people got by hook or crook a whole bunch of people who didn't have businesses didn't have legitimate businesses got that ppp money so the american public got trillions of dollars and is of no better off after getting all of that free money. Once my, one of my mentors told me, you just cannot give people free money and it ends well. So the American public, the 1.8 trillion in direct payments, because he's like, well, the American public didn't get that much money. Yes, they did. This kept the economy with these inflated hypermarkets it inflated Uber, it inflated restaurants, it inflated retail. The stimulus money stimulated the economy. And now it's gone. And look what happened. It's like music playing. Someone picked up the needle, needle and the music stopped playing. The music stopped playing. So what I want you guys to do after this video I got a link below. I want you to watch another video that talks about how these folks are trying to fool you into you can build a business and quit your job in 90 days. Links first comment below. Check that out.